sixth graders, I am back and we are going to finish up our study of the Harappan civilization. Get my marker. Okay, so we left off with job specialization and how the Indus River Valley civilization had some very um, amazing artists and skilled craftsmen. You can look on page 119 in your book and you can see a photograph of a jar from this civilization that's beautifully crafted and beautifully detailed. Um, now, what I wanted to say about that um, is that many of these artifacts contain pictographs. Pictographs are a kind of picture writing and the pictures represent words or ideas. Um, these ancient writings are an unsolved mystery. We do not know anything about that language. Um, let's, yes, let's talk a little bit about how advanced they were. We're on 121 and the houses, let's talk about the houses. The houses that, um, that were unearthed at Mahanjo-Daro give us some really amazing um, details, some amazing information about the way of life in the Harappan civilization. Um, one of the things that we know is Mahinjo-Daro, the city of Mahinjo-Daro, appeared, at least from what archaeologists can tell, it appeared to have two main streets. Two main streets. And along these streets, um, there were all of these buildings. Many of the buildings looked like um, or appear to be houses that were for people who would be members of what we would call the middle class. So middle class houses. Middle class houses. Um, a typical middle class house. Most of the houses had a floor made of red brick. So they had, they didn't have a dirt floor or a wooden floor. They had a red brick floor. Um, they think, archaeologists think that the second story was made out of wood because they found little bits of charred bits of wood around the top of the first story. The evidence shows that there was um, a central courtyard and then small rooms all the way around the courtyard. Um, those rooms included a bathroom, a kitchen, um, a room for the water well, so they were able to pump water into their houses. They also had, uh, many houses had rooms that looked like they were probably guest rooms. The family sleeping area was usually at the back of the house or on the second floor. They also found all kinds of interesting things in the home. Um, they found weights, they found jewelry, different kinds of seals, pottery, um, toys. They found toys, which uh, you may remember I said in one of our earlier chapters, if you find, if archeologists find toys, one of the things that they understand is that was probably a pretty prosperous society because um, in many societies, children were put to work and didn't have a lot of toys. And so if there are toys found, that often means that the society was economically prosperous. Um, they also found uh, lots of statues. And historians aren't sure if the statues were idols or pieces of art. Um, one of the things that they believe is that these middle-class houses were probably houses that were owned by merchants and craftsmen. Merchants and craftsmen. Um, it's interesting because secular historians, historians that don't 
come at history from a biblical biblical worldview, um, we're really surprised at how advanced the Harappan civilization was. But we know that when God created people, he created them with all the same abilities that we have now. We know uh, that humans did not evolve from a lesser being to a higher being. And so uh, from the very beginning, humans had these capabilities and the Harappan civilization just figured out how to do it sooner than some of the others. People um, today, we often think of those civilizations as being very primitive, but in reality, as we've just learned, some of them were quite advanced. Harappans had technology that allowed them to have running water and indoor plumbing. We didn't have that in the U.S. until the mid to late 1800s. They also had, the Harappans had an advanced sewage system. So they had indoor bathrooms and there were drains that carried the waste to pools and the waste was eventually carried to the farms to use as fertilizer. So this was a very advanced civilization, especially for the time period. Now, page 123, let's talk about the Harappan language. Um, ever since they started excavating the Harappan civilization, um, they've been trying to figure out what the writing meant. What does this writing mean? Um, the seals, the pottery, um, all kinds of artifacts have this language that's in, done in pictographs. You can actually see, pardon me, a little bit of it on page 123 in your book. There's a photograph of some seals and you can see these seals were made out of clay and stone and they have these pictures of some animals and some different um, simplified pictures that are that look a lot like um, Egyptian hieroglyphics. So the thing is, is linguist, and a linguist is a person who studies languages. Linguists have not been able to figure this out. They haven't been able to decipher it. Um, you'll remember when we were talking about ancient Egypt and we talked about Jean-Francois Champollion, who was the one that discovered and then deciphered the Rosetta Stone. And the only reason we were able to decipher the Egyptian hieroglyphics was because the Rosetta Stone had the three languages. They had the, the Egyptian script and the hieroglyphics and Greek. And so it took several years, but they were able to figure out what that meant. We have not found anything like that for the Harappan civilization, so we can't translate it. Now, even without knowing the, uh, the even we can't crack the code, but even without being able to crack the code, we've, historians have been able to figure out a lot of things about the culture. We can guess about their religious beliefs and their customs by looking at the pictographs. But that's all these are, is a guess. That's all it is, is a guess. Um, we don't know anything definite. Um, now, I wanted to add in to this that... Um, I went over it and then I forgot to write on the board as I was doing it. So for art, sciences, and written languages, let's just go over here and we'll, we'll say, because I've already talked about it, but I forgot to do the writing, that Harappans developed technology that allowed them to have running water, indoor plumbing, an advanced sewage system, And many artifacts display writing in pictographs, which linguists have been unable to decipher, unable to figure out. Now, the last part of this page, part B, is a question, how did the Harappan civilization end? Let's talk about that for a minute. The... The more archaeologists uncovered, the more artifacts they found, they found, the more questions they had. There was, um, for instance, there was a really interesting discovery where they found 14 skeletons in 
one room. And it might have been a burial place, but archaeologists and historians don't think it was. They believe it was the scene of some kind of tragedy. What happened? We don't know. Um, maybe they were invaded by another group of people. Um, we just don't know. There is some evidence that the civilization came to a just, boom, sudden end. It didn't just sort of trickle out and decline. It was a very sudden end, sometime between 1700 and 1500 BC. Now, there are a lot of possible reasons. Um, an invasion, a flood, a famine. Um, we just don't know exactly why the civilization of the Harappan people disappeared. So when you go back and answer that question, I want you to answer that in your own words. How did the Harappan civilization end? And with that, we are going to stop tomorrow. We will um, have a video um, about how to do the map. We're going to do the map on page 70. And for the map, you're going to need a pencil and then four colored pencils, purple, orange, red, and yellow. And I will see you tomorrow.